Hey you guys, I wanted to make a tiny little video for you guys. Um, some people have asked me how you could save a certain layout as a PDF using, uh, like say, a person's name as the file name of that PDF. Or in other words, using like a variable type of data uh, as the file name for the PDF that you save out of... Um, out of FileMaker. Now that's a uh, pretty easy so I'll just show you how it's done and I've made a little example file which is a very simple contacts database. I've got some contacts in here and they all have some information, a couple of fields that have been filled in. I have made a little PDF uh, image here that I'm gonna use as my PDF button and I've created two layouts so this is my normal FileMaker layout and I have another uh, print layout here which is more um, uh, if you look at it here, maybe if you look at it in preview mode, this looks a little bit better uh, for printing. So it's just white and it's within the borders of a page and I've uh, laying down a bit like this. Okay, very simple. So what I want to do is I want my script to go uh, to this record on the other layout and to save that record as a PDF. And I would like to maybe use the name Sue Phillips as the file name. So I have my... Um, uh, file uh, here. This is my uh, FileMaker file and maybe I would like to use a folder in here and in that folder I would like to save my contact. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a folder here um, and say contacts. Okay cool. So now I have to go in into FileMaker and make my script and that script will only have a few steps um, go to the other layout, save as PDF, etc. So let's go to our script workspace and let's make a new script and let's say save as PDF. Boom. Okay, so what am I going to do? Um, it, this is actually pretty simple. I'm gonna, just going to simply do go to layout and I'm going to go to my other layout. So the report is my uh, layout. Uh, the animation is irrelevant. Then I'm going to do a um, very simple save save records as PDF. Boom, I can do that. I'm gonna turn the dialog off because I don't want that to show up and I'm gonna just look at some settings here. I don't wanna append this to an existing PDF because it's just a little PDF on its own. I do wanna specify the output file and um, here in order to get started, I can just add a file here. I can go to my, uh, I have to find for a second my correct folder here. Yep, this one where my contacts are. And the FileMaker suggests that I'm going to call this untitled.pdf. So that's what I'm going to start with for now. I'm going to save this. I'm going to automatically open that file. That's good. Let's hit OK. And then let's see, I'm going to go to this layout, save the record as a PDF. Oh, maybe I've got to set some other settings as well. Let's go in here. OK, these settings are good. What about the last one here? Specify options. I want to save not the records being browsed, but only the current record. That's a very important one as well. OK, I think that does it for our PDF settings. So then I want to go to my layout, original layout. And maybe there is one thing I want to add just to be sure here. I'm going to add a print set up. Oops, not a print, but a print set up and in that step what I can specify there is I can specify that I want my uh, page to be in portrait and not in landscape mode so that's kind of an important one as well I'm gonna put the dialog off here as well so I'm gonna go I've got a few uh, simple steps uh, here and let's save this script and let's see if this works or not um, let's go on my layout here and attach this script to my button so let's go to button setup the action that this button performs is uh, does it's a perform script it's going to perform this script I would like my cursor to change to a hand when it hovers over this button and then that's kind of cool okay so let's see what happens and I'm going to actually try to trap and I'm going to go go ahead and look in my um, folder here I'm going to trap what happens by using my script debugger and my data viewer so I can kind of follow what's going on when my script runs so let's click this button to see what happens of course my script debugger is going to stop my script and is going to allow me to step through this script step by step so let's click this button okay the first step is going to be go to layout so I'm going to do that okay cool that looks good the next step is my print setup then save records as PDF let's step through this one as well and it also opens the PDF so that gives me this PDF. I've nice. I've created a nice PDF. That's kind of good. Let's close this one again. Let's go back to FileMaker, and then I'm going to go to Original Layout. Okay, good. And then I arrive here again. So that looks kind of good. That has worked well, and we have our PDF here. 
So the only problem that I'm having right now is that this PDF does not have the correct name. It's just named untitled and that's the problem we're going to solve right now is how can I make this one uh, have the name of this specific character. Okay, let's dive back into my script and let's go and look in the place where my um, file name has been determined. Let's go in here in my specify output file and this file and then uh, how do you call it a colon semicolon colon I think it's a colon uh, file contact slash untitled.pdf all of this stuff is the stuff that determines the file name so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this because I'm going to need to use some magic to uh, make this uh, work properly. Um, for now, I'm going to start off with this example that basically FileMaker has given me. And I'm going to go here uh, and what I'm going to say is, you know what, as a first step, I'm going to add set variable. And I kind of want to do that as the first thing because I'm going to do that before I change from my layout. So as set variable, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say this one is going to be called file name. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to specify and I'm going to paste the thing I just copied. So if I look at it, then this is the thing that I need. So file contacts, that's the folder, the contacts, and that slash also kind of determines that this is a folder. All of this stuff I kind of need to keep. Uh, the PDF I need to keep as well. It's only the untitled part that now needs to go and change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, split these things up. So untitled is separate, the .pdf is separate, and these things and this one needs to change. So uh, in order for this to kind of stay, I'm going to have to put this in quotations. But I'm not going to click this button because then it will put all the quotes here. So I'm just going to manually type in a couple of quotes and this part goes in between quotes and in between quotes of course means that that is a fixed text that is going to stay now this part also needs to say so I'm gonna put quotes around that part as well and this kinda of shows me that I've got three parts now I've got this first part here that is gonna stay this one is gonna become a variable part and this part needs to stay as well because I have three different parts I have to kind of join them together by using this and here so I'm gonna put this and there so okay all of that is good now I just need to change this part and obviously uh, some of you were probably already catching on it's very simple um, I can just add fields here now um, I've got my first name field and I've got my last name field but I also have a C full name field now this C full name field for me this one already kind of makes my calculation of the full name I'll, I'll just go out of here real quick um, let's just do first name for now. Okay, I'll show you what that does. So this C full name field is an auto enter calculated value that does the first name and a little space here between quotations and the last name. So this already makes a first and last name uh, calculation. If you don't have that field, you can just um, you can just create kind of that calculation in here as well by just doing a contacts first name and a space and a last name. So you can do that. Or if you did like I did and you've already created a full name field, you can just forget about this whole thing and just use that C full name field. So now you have three parts. This fixed part in the front, which FileMaker kind of needs to determine that this is a file and it's in this folder. Then contact C full name and then you have your .pdf. Okay, if we use that, then what we need to do is we need to take the name of this uh, variable. I'm going to copy this one and we need to replace it because right now this one is still saving as untitled.pdf, which I don't want. So I'm going to specify that the output file and I'm going to paste in my dollar file name. That's my variable name. That's of course the variable variable I have created here. So if I do this and I save this whole script and I hit PDF here, then you can maybe see in the, on the side here that a new PDF has been created. Sue Phillips PDF. That's this one. And if I would go to my other character right here and I hit PDF, then I get Sandy Hill which is obviously this person who gets her um, file name created this way. 
So that's kind of cool. Uh, I can get rid of this one. And now I've got all my PDFs nicely saved under the proper name. So that's kind of cool. And that's kind of handy. A few things, however, can go wrong in this kind of situation. If you are typing in a name uh, of a person, so let's try someone new. Let's try to insert a picture here. Let's see what else have we got. Oh, now I have to go and look for my pictures again. Um, images, portraits. So I've got a Cindy here. That's kind of good. Cindy. Sometimes when you're typing, you use the tab to go to the next field. And let's say we call our fields. But sometimes you might accidentally hit return. And then you realize, oops, I've made a mistake, and you hit tab again, and then you can kind of go on, and there isn't really any problem. But if I make a PDF now, what we see is uh, the PDF has been made, and the name is in here, Cindy Fields. But if you look here, you can see that there is a kind of a little bit of a problem. The problem is this one does not have an extension. The reason that this one does not have an extension is because in this calculation where we use the full name... Um, and we can maybe actually even figure this out if we go in here and we look in the C full name. This one is good, this one is good, but this one has an extra space here or an extra paragraph where it kind of goes to the next line. And um, that's because that extra return is in this field. I put a return in here which shouldn't be there, but the thing is you don't see it. If you don't go into that field, you don't see that there is a return there. It's kind of invisible, but it is there. And so if, by using this full name field as the f uh, field name, FileMaker has basically put the, the, the paragraph in there as well. And so the PDF is in theory coming on the second line. But of course, as in the file name, that is not being used anymore. So that all that stuff behind the return kind of gets cut off. And so that's, uh, that's kind of what breaks the script. Something like that could break the script. So if we just simply kind of go in here and remove that, and so then we end up with one single line. Now, of course, when we uh, do the PDF, then we do get the correct file with a correct um, extension. So we can get rid of this one. Other things that can go wrong are people that have maybe a, a slash or a, in, in, in Windows, you have a lot of illegal characters that you cannot use in a, in a file name. So if you use something like a slash, and I think in Windows even like a star or, or like a last risk, or I think even a... a exclamation point all of these things you can't use all of these things in a in a file name so if you try to use this then it's going to tell you that this could not be created on this disk please use a different name and and you're thinking but there is enough room on my disk well the room on your disk is not a problem in this case it's the file name that's using all these illegal characters and i think here uh, mostly the slash is a big problem because that wants to look into a certain folder that doesn't exist of course but i think here well on the mac it seems to work to use these uh, these kind of uh, an asterisk and an exclamation point but if you try to use these on Windows it'll tell you that you cannot use those kinds of characters in a file name so that's going to give you uh, trouble as well so these are a few things you need to look out for uh, things that can go wrong now if you want to maybe um, what I've done here is I've added a little date of birth let's say you would like to use the date of birth uh, in your script. Um, as you can probably already guess, you will run into the same kind of a problem because you have your slashes here and those will uh, make it very difficult for your uh, file name because you can't use these slashes in your file name. Let's go and try this out. Let's take this script. Let's do a duplicate of that script and let's say save as PDF DOB. Now you're probably never gonna be using a date of birth in a file name, but maybe if you have orders that are done on a certain date, maybe in those kinds of cases you want to use your date of birth. You want to use any kind of date in your file name. Um, or if you just simply want to use today's date in your file name, then you could uh, run into trouble. But let's just try this out and see what happens. Let's say that our variable file name is going to be the date of birth and the full name. Or you let's say and and 
Okay, cool. So now we have the date of birth and a little uh, space dash space and then a little uh, the, the full name and then that's PDF. Okay, cool. So if we do that, let's save this and let's try to just simply run this script by just running it like this. And then we get, of course, that same um, that same error message here. And what you can already kind of see here is that it says 1995 Sue Phillips PDF could not be created on this disk. And her date of birth is 06 slash 06 slash 1995. So basically FileMaker is looking for the folder 06 and then another folder in there 06. And of course that doesn't work because those folders don't exist. So it kind of gets, gets into trouble uh, with that. Now what you can do, um, very simple is you can say, I'm going to specify here, you can use something like the substitute function to substitute those slashes with, for instance, a little dash. So to substitute that one with one of those. And the substitute function, very simple, if you kind of call it up like this, it says it returns a text string with every occurrence of the search string in the specified text replaced by the replace string. Now that sounds like it's complicated, but if you choose this one, it gets very simple. You have a certain text and you can search in that text for a certain character and you can replace that with something else. Now the text that I want is my date of birth. The search string is gonna be a slash and the replace string is gonna be a dash. Very simple. So this whole thing, I'm gonna copy this I want to put that in here. So instead of just simply using the date of birth, I'm going to use the substitute of the date of birth by uh, and, and substituting these characters here. So I'm going to paste this in here. Okay, this makes this whole thing look way more complicated, but really if you just break it down, it's actually very simple. So let's try this out and let's see if this has worked. So let's, uh, hit okay, let's save this one and then let's run this script to see what happens. And then you can see right here that we've got 06-06-1995 suephillips.pdf. So that's looking kind of good and that way you can kind of use a, uh, a date to, um, to save uh, a, file, a file. And so you don't need to worry about those illegal characters um, in, your, in your file name. Now, if you want uh, to go even further with that, if you wanna make sure, maybe if you're using like say a project name as your file name and sometimes some projects have illegal characters in them, what you can do as well in your script is you could maybe um, either use the substitute um, function. Let's specify here. You can go and use the substitute function and then uh, substitute multiple characters all with, a, for instance, a dash. Or you could do the filter. Um, and that what it does here is it returns from text to filter only those characters specified in filter text in the order they were originally entered in text to filter. Okay, let's see. Um, so what you could do is, actually is filter the right way? Uh, I don't really know for sure if filter is the right one. Um, I think you, you think it is filter. So what you could do is you could have like a field and then you can say, I would like to only use, um, Actually, let's go on the Google and let's see um, FileMaker filter. Let's see what that does. So what you can do is basically um, give all the characters that are kind of good and useful. Okay, as you can see here, Oh, I'm actually getting this in Dutch, which is not useful for you guys. But um, basically you could filter a certain character, like this is a phone number. And what, what's happening here, and this is a good example, is you're filtering and you're only gonna leave uh, all, in this case, all the numbers from zero to nine. And so it doesn't matter which uh, brackets and dashes and everything that is in here, what you're gonna get as a result is only the, the numbers because everything that you've got in here in your um, filtered text, that's the only stuff that's gonna be left. So you can do that in FileMaker as well. You could say, for instance, I've got contacts, 
um, and then you could just go uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, etc. And you could put in the whole alphabet. And if you do that, then you will never ever get any illegal characters in there because it's only it's going to filter out only all the characters of the alphabet, and that's basically it. So um, that is another uh, another way to make sure that you definitely cannot get any illegal characters. Um, in there because your user is just going to simply be using this database and when he is uh, putting in illegal characters uh, like for instance a return the message that he is going to get oh actually in this case it's not a problem uh, but if he puts in a slash or something like that the the error message that your user is going to get could not create create could not be created on this disk, use a different name, make more room on the disk. This is kind of going to confuse your user. He's not really going to understand exactly what's going wrong and he's going to call you up and he's going to ask you what's going on. So it's best to kind of protect yourself from these kinds of errors by using substitute or filter to kind of prevent this kind of stuff from happening. Okay, uh, that was it. I hope you guys learned a little bit more and I'll see you uh, on the next video. All right, ciao. If you guys want to learn a ton more about FileMaker, you can head over to my Udemy page where I've got a bunch of entire FileMaker courses online. You can follow them and basically we make entire FileMaker systems from scratch and I'll take you uh, on the entire process step by step. There is even one that is uh, completely free, so you can just follow that free of charge and that is a beginner tutorial where we make an entire contacts database. Um, that's a really fun one that you can follow that can teach you the basics of FileMaker. So head over there by following the links in the description and I'll see you guys there.